HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Powder donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com, and we are offering a free trial of uh, Audible.com. If you go to audibletrial.com slash business growth, you can sign up for the trial and you can explore the content. And if you don't know this, I mean, there's been a lot of advertising lately. Um, It's more than just audiobooks. There's a lot of incredible content. That you can get a hold of there. So please go sign up for the trial and explore. Over the years, the Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast has gained recognition as a great resource for small business owners, sales professionals, business leaders of all kinds. We have been fortunate to be included on lists of the best podcasts to listen to Uh, all over the place, Forbes, Inc.com, Proven, uh, People First. Uh, It's been a pretty incredible uh, list of lists, so to speak. Uh, And that's because of the guests. These are folks who have expertise in a particular area of business, and they join me for a conversation where they share that expertise with all of you. The goal is that you get the information that you need, you get the ideas that you are looking for, and you... Uh, find those people who have information that you are that you need and that you can connect with those people. You know, you sort of get to hear them and see that they really know their stuff. Uh, and today is no different. My guest today is Greg Ott. Greg is the CEO of NAV, a fintech company that helps small businesses access capital and make informed financial decisions. Greg has over 20 years experience leading both startups and Fortune 1000 corporations. 
He's built new organizations and transformed existing ones to be more nimble, innovative, and results focused. Greg's always thinking about how to streamline business lending and frequently shares his thoughts in articles as a Forbes contributor and on stage at industry events. Thanks so much for joining me today, Greg. It's really great to be here, Dan. Nice to meet you. And you as well. Um, I, um, we're going to be talking today about the things we've learned through the uh, PPP loan program, but I would really like to start with learning more about your background and uh, how it is you ended up uh, getting to NAV and, and what's your, um, what's your why, you know, what are, what are your goals with that? Um, yeah, so I you know it, you, you start to become very fortunate when you feel like what you do for work really lines up with um, your passions and your positive energy, and I'm fortunate enough to do that in leading now. I've always been entrepreneurial, um, but I don't think I always knew it. Um, even back when I was a kid, I was the one who, you know, our family road trips would grab the map and try and help my dad find a better way uh, across the country, whether we were driving to you know, Mount Rushmore or whatever. And that, I think that's part of what made me entrepreneurial to begin with, which is that uh, energy to say, there's, there's, there's got to be a better way to solve these problems. Um, through my professional career, I've always leaned into data-driven solutions and the insights you can gather by um, analyzing data. My team laughs because I always talk about the information hierarchy, data, information, knowledge, and wisdom. Um, over time, that led me to... Uh, do a handful of startups and then I would move to a large company and then a startup and then a large company. I was at Intuit leading global marketing for QuickBooks. And what I could really see some of the gaps in how uh, small businesses were being served. And I connected with the um, investors in NAB and realized there was such an opportunity to better solve the inefficiency between borrowers and lenders. And if we could solve that inefficiency, everybody would win. And that really just fit my nature, which is, can you build a business where the good guys win and, uh, and everybody wins around them? And that's really when you, when you create efficiency in the ecosystem. And that's, uh, that keeps me motivated at now. Wow, that's really great. And, and, I, and it's, it really resonates with me because um, I think we're both the kinds, kind of people who are in the business we're in because we want to have a positive impact on other people and in my case and i believe in your case as well especially small business owners who really are uh, the fabric of this country and have unique challenges and struggles that not everybody understands well and, and, and it is a really complex problem to solve and i can could see that that a lot of people not only were small business owners they're all different right their situations are all different it's kind of messy. There's a lot of inconsistency. And so you can't even really describe a small business owner. There's, right. there's entrepreneurs and there's people who are well-established. And I think we really saw this with PPP when they said, okay, this is a small business protection program, but that those people who had 100 to 500 employees were very different looking businesses than people who were, who were much smaller. And so solving the small business challenges is what, what we say here is that when Small businesses succeed, individuals, communities, and economies succeed. And there's nothing else like that when you solve this, this complex problem around small businesses. Yeah. And it is, it is so true. I, I used to know a, an executive director of a small business um, organization, and he would say, when you've met one small business owner, you've met exactly one small business owner. That's, <laughs> that's <perfect. laughs> And so at, at now, what we did is, and for me personally, I said, well, this isn't, this is, the problem isn't going to be solved by just, you know, trying to connect with all 30 million small businesses. This is a data problem. Technology now exists, and we've got to use that technology to create efficiency. And it's the only way you can do that when you have 30 million independent individuals, small businesses, you've got to be able to, to use data and software. And at NAV, while we, what we do is become that gateway to, to, to capital, really what we are is intelligent software on top of data. 
And that's how wow. we're able to solve for so many different situations and so many different lending products. And that's the other thing in the small business uh, financial ecosystem. Unlike the consumer financial ecosystem, there's really like five, right? You've got home loans, car loans, student loans, uh, personal loans, and maybe credit cards. Everybody who's tried to get capital as a small business owner hears everything from term loans to invoice factoring to cash advances to uh, micro loans to crowdfunding and all the, it just proliferates and the permutations of financial products is more than any small business owner should have to become an expert in and that's what we think we can do for them yeah yeah it's so important and boy it it is it, it's so complex and daunting because you're trying to run your business you don't have time to learn all that stuff and, and, and yeah right it's you shouldn't your time yep yep totally with you on that okay so here we are in this lovely year of uh, 2020 <laughs> this has really been a lot of fun um and i i think it's probably been especially crazy for small business lending because boy, you know, when everything shut down and businesses shut down, it it had to have completely changed the landscape of being able to lend to small business owners. So talk to us some about like what you've seen happen yeah. through all of this. Yeah, it's it's been amazing um, when we thought what we expected at the beginning of the year and the challenge yeah. well, where we are now. Um, what, you know, the it's always been challenging to underwrite small businesses. It's always been a challenge to understand the risk and simply put, most lenders are just trying to figure out, are you going to pay me back? And the less sure I am, the more I have to charge you. And yeah. with, with the financial crisis, and that threw the brakes on everything. Um, so at, at NAB, what we do is we aggregate the supply of lenders. We're not a lender. We aggregate the supply side of lenders uh, and, and credit cards. And we just saw all of them come to a screeching halt. Mm. They just said, we are not originating new loans. We don't even want you to, to send prospects or small businesses to us right now. We just, we just don't know what to do. And there was this amazing period of uncertainty. Um, and at the same time, PPP was happening. And we'll get into the, the disastrous management of, of that. Um, but what that just added was, even more uncertainty for the lenders. What's gonna happen after this? Is the government gonna step in more? If the government's gonna lend money, then I don't have to lend money. I would rather, I'd rather lend the government's money than my money. And so it was just this massive period of uncertainty where the supply side of lending just, just went away. Um, mm. And that was so hard. A lot of small business owners are able to tap into, they call it loans really, but it's really more advances or use a line of credit. And that's, and it's just because for a lot of small business owners, income is lumpy. So they need access to capital. So a lot of times short-term access to capital. And that really hurt people because they, they were used to a rhythm or a cadence where they could access the capital they needed when they needed it. And it just. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It, it, ugh. All right. <laughs> So, so let's talk about that paycheck protection program. So have we ever seen anything like it before? It, it was, you know, tremendously mismanaged, but how does it fit into the whole idea of business lending? Yeah, you know, it was, um, you know, it depends on, you can look at it glass half full, glass half empty, you know, to some degree, it was nice the government did something. I had the opportunity to have access to um, a lot of people in, in Washington, D.C. and talk about the program. And their hands were kind of tied because they didn't, they didn't even know what they didn't know. Yeah. Um, and so many people in our government just assumed that banks are there to serve small businesses. <laughs> and you try to explain, actually, banks only serve the, the top tier of small businesses. Yeah. Uh, and... And they didn't realize, well, some of them kind of realized that, but they didn't know what else to do. And how do they, they, they move this as quickly as possible? The other big thing about it is, is you know, the name. The name is not 
the Small Business Protection Program. The name is the Paycheck Protection Program. <laughs> the way it was structured is really an extension of unemployment benefits. They knew people were going to be getting laid off. They didn't want them to all end up on unemployment. So they just threw um, employment money at it. And that was that really made it hard because a lot of people felt this is supposed to help my business survive. That actually wasn't even how it was designed. It was designed for you to not lay off employees. And so that created a conflict of expectations, which was um, aggravated by the fact that the banks were self-serving. They said, well, I'm gonna give it, they, they'd lent, the, the first money went to people they had already lent money to. In other words, they were shoring up the loans that they had already made. And I think that, unfortunately, not only did it left many small businesses, you know, out in the cold waiting, but it it just created a lot of distrust in the whole program, and that's been that was that was really unfortunate. And and not only that, they, they didn't really take into account the solo businesses, businesses, the sole proprietors who don't have employees technically, right? They, they didn't have. W-2s they could turn to to say, this is what my payroll was. Exactly. So, well, that's the, and that was the point, right? Which was they weren't 24 million solopreneurs out of 30 million small businesses. And the program was designed for people who had employees. Yeah. They didn't really care if you're, if you didn't have employees, they didn't really care if your business succeeded or failed. It was an extension of unemployment. And so for solopreneurs, yeah, you absolutely got left out, which was really frustrating. And then the paperwork, which you, you start to, at one point it was supposed to be streamlined, but you get banks involved. Yeah. Now it's verification of employment and all these other things, which then left solopreneurs who don't have a W-2, yeah. even more struggling per se. I should be able to tap this, tap into this capital. How do I even show wages? Yeah. Right. It was a, um, you know, on one hand, uh, and I did talk to, like, say, for instance, some of the staff of Marco Rubio, who was one of the, the people really pushing for it. And we talked to um, some of the folks in the SBA. And I, I, I do think the intention was we've got to do something. Yeah. yeah. But right. it was, we've got to do something. And then the application of the something really didn't recognize the real landscape yeah. of small businesses in America. Yeah, definitely. I, I'm, I'm not sure we have even gotten them to understand it now seven months later but so how did small businesses go about actually getting that funding you know um there was wave one and then wave two where they um, allowed other people to facilitate the loans what was what's really interesting and is is what it actually operationally took to get a loan which was this antiquated system called e-tran which is a, a computer, a special computer terminal that was in the corner of the banks that was connected to the SBA. And there was only so many of these. And the banks who had them didn't really want to have to deal with them. And so then they allowed others to get them in this second wave. And it really, be, even, even for those lenders, what we saw is they, they took the, the, the um, clean applications and they always processed those first. It was the Here's the clean ones, process those. Here's the ones who, these are the people who are submitting a target receipts as income verification. Like, I don't think that's gonna work. The, those got quick no's. And then there was a lot of people kind of stuck in the middle who said, wow, this is a lot more paperwork than I, than I realized to actually show what my revenues were, show what my employees, show what my employee expenses were. Um, and the paperwork process side of it became cumbersome. That yeah. being said, over four and a half million loans were generated. And they finally got to the long tail. You can see the average loan size keep on creeping down in, uh, from hundreds of thousands of dollars, which meant you had you know, 50 or more employees. And then it was the, the last ones to get the loans were the ones, the solopreneurs, the people who said, hey, I qualify for, my business is impacted. I qualify for $12,000. Those people, unfortunately, had to wait until last. But mm. if they were persistent and... Um, oftentimes that meant they had to lean on an accountant or someone else to help them with the paperwork, which meant an, an added expense. But if they were persistent, they were able to get, get the capital. And, you know, I, I met people who had put in their 
application. And while they were waiting, they had to take out a loan to cover their employees' wages. So, but then the PPP had to go to wages. It couldn't go to pay off a loan. So, you know, it, it, yeah, it was yeah. messy. It was all messy. That's the this whole point of like the stipulations of what it went for, again, was about not having people go on unemployment, not what you needed to do to pay off a loan or, or, or keep your business going. Or I have a, I actually have a big, you know, opportunity. I've got to buy some materials. I can't use the money to buy the materials. This is ridiculous. And so um, it, it really created, I think, it, it just threw more challenges, unexpected challenges for small business owners. If, if anything, it, it was one more test of resilience. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I've been impressed at how uh, how crafty and creative small business owners have been. Like you said, getting additional loans or finding ways to tap into. Um, a, 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 I'm sure in, in your area of the country, you had a lot. We had a, a lot of restaurant tours and shops yeah. that said, "Look, in the neighborhood, buy gift cards, do these things." All that creativity was was amazing um, to to kind of find out how to bridge. And, and keep going, whether they got a PPP loan or not. The other thing for most people, PPP loan, it, it merely was a stopgap. It's not like this is going to all of, all of a sudden they get to the other, get this loan and the business is thriving. It was really money. It was designed to last eight weeks. Bridget. So they, the government looked at it and they said, we just need two months. We just want yeah. two months of people not going on any employment. Well, two months didn't even come close to oh covering the impact of the shutdown for mostly small business owners. I'm going to take a quick sponsor break and then I have some more questions for you. Accelerate Your Business Growth Podcast is happy to be sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken digital audio entertainment and information. They have thousands of titles to choose from, as well as podcasts, Audible originals, guided meditations, and more. One of my favorite audiobooks is Everyone Deserves a Great Manager by Scott Miller. For me, I love being able to listen to it anywhere and across my devices without losing my place. And I think you will too. So visit audibletrial.com slash business growth to explore the variety of audiobooks and programs for yourself. For, you know, and, and then some businesses come back partially speaking of restaurants where they can be at either 25 percent capacity or 50 or they can have people outside but they can only have every other table and now it's getting cold in places like ohio where i am so they're trying to figure out what in the world they're going to do i mean there's there's just so much to keeping a small business afloat uh and and then there's no other relief coming yeah, that's what's that's what's really hard is um, I think there was uncertainty initially, of course, on on the shutdown. What's this mean, and how long is this going to last? How can or how can I operate, or should I operate? Um, you know, some small business owners are having a chance to plan, and some have looked forward and said, you know what, this isn't going to work, and they're yeah. they're they're shutting their doors. Others are going to going to try and give it a go, and that's where they're creating being creative with their expenses. But right now, I don't think anybody's assuming there's going to be um, another windfall windfall of cash, mm -hmm. which comes back to what's going on in the ecosystem now, and uh, and how can small businesses get the capital they need to keep going, especially through the winter. Um, and what we're seeing is um, there, there's, there's been a bit of a shift in that when I said the, the supply side, the lenders. The card issue has just stopped. And then since probably August, they've been gradually dipping their toes in the water and mm -hmm. going slightly deeper and slightly deeper. Some lenders, um, some of the, the names that people might know, the non-bank lenders who really serve a lot of small businesses, folks like a cabbage or an on deck or a, a blue vine, they've really, you know, they 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 haven't or they've gotten acquired. They they've really ran into tough times. There's a, there's other lenders who are coming back who really look at it and say, hey, I'm willing to I'm willing to price that risk. And so what they're doing is they're gathering information on how small businesses are doing and, and what they're doing. Um, but there are lenders coming back, and small business there 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 is places for small businesses to access capital. 
However, you know, not surprisingly, what they want to know more so than ever is um, give me a reason to believe that you'll have income in the future. And the biggest one of that is so things like um, bank statements, having a business bank account, um, being able to track revenues and expenses are is more important than ever. And but if you have that and you have some semblance of look, I can I can make money through this crisis. Um, there are lenders out there. There are plenty of lenders out there who are uh, who are willing to to lend you money. Um, and the good news is the the rates have, are not predatory or haven't gotten predatory. Now they're higher, as small business owners know, they're higher than consumer rates because small businesses are riskier. So yeah. they're, they're, they're higher, but they're not, they're not extremely high. And um, I think there's more vehicles. One of the things that's been interesting, you know, necessity being the mother of, of invention, um, one of the challenges a lot of lenders have had is, is just um, how, how to service loans. And again, they're using technology and software to streamline how they service loan, which removes cost and removes hmm. risk, which means they can lend more money. And so there is this wonderful uh, acceleration of technology and um, digital lending, so to speak, that is helping solve this problem. Now, it's not any, anywhere back to normal, uh, especially for people who have, who you know, may, maybe have, are struggling with their their credit quality or struggling with revenues. Um, it hasn't gotten all the way to the um, distribution of situations. But for people who say, look, I'm, I think I can weather this out and they can, they can show that in their financials, there are plenty of lenders out there uh, who are willing to help you uh, move through winter, so to speak, proverbially and literally. <laughs> Boy, that's good to know because, uh, you know, th this is going to be an interesting time. And so I appreciate that information. It was, um, I, I think it's uh, really valuable. And so how do people find those lenders? I, I, I feel like that's where NAV comes in. Is that fair? Yeah, it really is. In, all, in many ways, we see our, our platform as an alternative to Google, <laughs> where instead of typing in Google and, and hitting you know, small business loans or you know, going to one of those sites where they sell your leads and you get your phone rings off the hook for yeah. five hours afterwards. That's not at all what we do. We're, we're integrated with, with lenders and we help you see what you qualify for before you apply. Um, so NAV uses um, your real business data and, uh, it's, all, and, and it's all free. Uh, NAV gets compensated by the lenders if you get a loan. Um, and uh, we connect into your business data and then use your business data to show you, here's, here's what your options are. Um, and it's totally up to you uh, whether you proceed. If you want to proceed, we have people who can help you um, or you can do it all on your own. Boy, that, that is so unbelievably valuable. Not just now, I mean, at all times, but I would think especially now when there's so much uncertainty. It, it, it really is. And, and just knowing like, what are my options? Should I, yeah. even, should I even get a loan? You know, uh, <laughs> and you know, a lot of what we end up doing is um, education to the point on what's, what are, what do all these terms mean? What, what is a, like if, for, as we set up a, a front, a lot of small businesses, do I, do I want a term loan? Is this a, what, what, what's the difference between a term loan and a line of credit? So we have all that education content for free and, and have wow. webinars if you want to attend um, and things you can download to know enough to know what's going to be right for your business. Um, and what we've seen is, a, is a, actually a significant increase in traffic um, as, the, the, as the summer has, has moved through and, and people have exhausted their PPP loans and they're trying to figure out what's next. Right. Right. And speaking of that, so we really don't know what's next, right? We, we, we have no idea how the rest of the year is gonna go or what 2021 is gonna bring, but is there like one thing that you would advise small business owners to make sure that they are doing so they're putting themselves in the best financial position? It's hard to say one thing, but okay. um, it is a chance to, um, uh, 
tighten the reins a little bit financially. Mm -hmm. I think the thinking of thinking creatively is, is, is right on. And, and uh, having an accountant is an expense or an advisor is an expense, um, but it, it does help small business owners if diving into the into their financials is not their favorite area. There are resources, so that's what those resources are for. But if they have, you know, if they pivoted their business or they have an opportunity and they can show that in their financials or they know how to keep their bank account transactions clean. So, so some, some small businesses, and we saw this with PPP, they didn't even have a business bank account. They just kind of put all their, all their money together. Now, separating that um, and then being able to show my business income on business expenses just simply in one business bank account really helps. Um, and if you do that, what we're seeing is that um, supply follows demand. So there's no question there's demand from small business for more capital and, and access to credit in these solutions. And so we're seeing the supply side, innovative lenders coming back, testing their models. They're all looking at how did the first people they lent to, how are those businesses doing this? And they can broaden that. And so the supply cool. side will increase because the demand is there. The thing that a small business owner can do is just make sure they're doing some of the basics so that they don't have the same headache so many ran into with PPP where I, I couldn't, I couldn't really show show how I was paying myself. Well, do that out of your business checking account. Or I couldn't really show, you know, that invoice that I got paid on. You know, we'll put that in your business checking account. Just keeping some of those financials a little bit cleaner is going to allow you to tap into uh, capital and credit as you need it. Wow, that's really valuable. I mean, this whole conversation is valuable. I feel like um, that there's actually. A, a way to go, a, a place to go, as opposed to how I felt before we had this conversation, which was, I have no idea. <laughs> Just absolutely none. So Greg, I really appreciate this conversation. So will you please share with the listeners, you know, how they can find NAV and, and the resources that are there and, you know, how, how do they get started with Getting yeah. the help they need. Nav, Nav is really simple. Nav.com, NAV.com. Um, it really is short for navigate. We're trying to help you navigate the challenges of access to capital for small businesses. And you can either move in directly or you can uh, create an account. And when you create an account, you can connect your, um, your checking account. We'll for free pull your business credit scores. We'll pull your personal credit scores all for free so you can see how you're going to be judged before you take any action. Wow. Um, and give then there's content right alongside of that helps you interpret what those business, what those credit scores mean. A lot of small businesses didn't even realize that there was a business credit score. Consumer lending, consumer finances, it just it takes up so much of the, the volume of that and FICO scores this and home mortgage rates at all time lows. Um, a lot of small businesses didn't realize that their business is judged on its own merits and has a business credit score from generally the same bureaus that do your consumer credit score. And that's mm -hmm. what a lot of lenders look at initially to say, do you have a healthy business? And so there's steps you can take, even if you're not in the market to find it, I don't need it right now, there's steps you can take and we have guides to do it all all yourself. So we're more of a DI or do-it-yourself tool. But there's steps you can take to improve the quality of your business credit information, to improve, to guidance on how to set up your financials. Uh, we have um, cash flow prediction tools where we, we will show you, hey, given given the rate, your history, here's here's how much cash you're going to have and, and when you might run out. And all and, and those tools. Um, are, are there for small businesses to access. And then when they're in the market for financing, we just try and streamline the process, make it as simple as possible, the least amount of paperwork, since we're already sitting and connected to your data with, with small business owners permission, we streamline that process and can connect that data right into lenders. So you don't have to deal with the same level of paperwork everybody had with PPP. Boy, how tremendously valuable is that? And, and, and listeners, you know, these guys are consistently watching and finding out who's lending 
and how they're lending and what information they need. So you don't have to be in the dark. You don't have to go, you know, go it alone. Um, you don't have to go through all of the uncertainty and craziness of trying to figure it out because yeah. we're you know, no, tran transparency and certainty are two of our principles uh, for small business owners and how do we create transparency, which is, hey, what's out there? What am I on? And then certainty, which no one likes to do all the work and then get denied. And that is one of the stories we hear all of, you know, over and over, and we heard it even through PMP, PVP is, you know, I, all I got was a no, I didn't even get an explanation of why or what my other options are. And so wow. you know, because we use the real business data and we're trying to create a bit more of an intelligence around the business financing um, and use the software. And so we force the lenders to give us a lot of information in order to be on our platform. Um, that allows us to, to build an efficient um, experience around this and create that certainty and transparency. Which is so just incredibly valuable. I really so appreciate you spending this time with me and sharing this information. It, it is so timely. It is so very important. And it really sort of lifts the veil off of the fogginess of what in the world has been going on with this. And, and where do I go? What do I do? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you know, one of the things is if you work in and around small businesses, um, you have to be a uh, persistent optimist. And we, <laughs> we at NAV really are optimistic um, about the small business economy. And I, you know, I'll tell you what, Diane, even more so now as, as we near the election and there's polarization, you start to realize, hey, you know, when small businesses can really be part of that fabric of pulling us all together. Everybody wins when small businesses win, and it creates yeah. such um, common ground. And you know, it's not just stick it to the man. You know, I hate the big corporations. Some people feel that way, uh, but it really is about pulling our communities together. And yeah. and I think that I think there's a lot of people who are want to support small businesses who are there to support small businesses um, there was a stat that came out last week that said new business applications it's like an application for an ein uh hit an, an all-time high really and i found that so motivating that through all of this we're in the crisis we're not out of the crisis and the entrepreneurial spirit of like, I can do this. I've got an idea. I want to pursue my passion. Some maybe it's enabled from work from home and distributed workforces or layoffs. But either way, that that entrepreneurial spirit thrives. And that made me think that, you know what? Small businesses are one of the keys of, of pulling us all together and helping people find common ground and helping people find that, that joy in I, I, you know, just I'm planting some trees in my yard on Friday, I'm really excited. And Moon Valley Nursery in Pacifica, California are like, I, I called them up, I didn't know, I, I didn't know a nursery or a tree. And this guy, Frank, the nicest guy in the world. I didn't know a, a English Laurel from a Carolina Laurel. And he is, you know, he helped me, he's calling me, he's texting me. We're now all of a sudden he's, he's like, you know, Hey man, you having a good day? And I'm like, oh my God, this is why yeah. help us. And this is why you can, you, you know that the I, basic economics say where there's demand, supply will follow. So that that will happen. But what's really exciting is thinking about small businesses really thriving. And this crisis being a, a trampoline, being a, a bounce back of the small business economy that can help us all. So. We remain optimistic. We remain uh, a little bit idealistic, uh, and we ve are very data driven as well. And so, uh, we're here to help small businesses. I th I thank you so much for uh, saying all of that. When you were talking about it, I was thinking it gets me energized too because I think about all of these companies that that innovated and modified and you know looked at the landscape and said. 
okay, what can I do? Right? They, they didn't pull the covers over their head. That's not what entrepreneurs do. Uh, there's small business owners and there's entrepreneurs in, in my estimation. And entrepreneurs for me are the people who say, how can I solve this problem? They're possibilities thinkers. They believe that there's an answer out there, that there's a way to get through. You know, they, they pull people together in conversation and problem solving. And we have witnessed a lot of that during this period of time. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Yes, Thank sir. goodness. Right? Yeah, it is, it is, right? And so, yeah. so we don't see it as dire. We see it as, um, you know, that uh, challenges make us stronger and the small businesses are going to be stronger because of this. And they're yeah. finding ways to innovate and they're looking at how they're running their business and opportunities for digitization and using tools or, hey, I don't need these all these tools. And, and they can streamline their businesses either way. I think it's, you know, we, we take this as we really believe the future of small business is bright. That's so great. Hear that, everybody? The future of small business is bright. And now you know you've got a resource you can use to help you get the what, whatever you need. It could be that it's an education that you need so you can change things that are going on in your business so then you can be um, credit worthy. It could be that you are. And here's who's out there for you. So a lot of, lot of options, which is also really great to know that, that it, you know, all hope is not lost. So, uh, so Greg, thank you. Listeners, thank you. Uh, you are absolutely who we are doing this for. I'd also like to thank audible.com. Head on over to audibletrial.com slash business growth. Sign up for that free trial and check out not only the thousands of audiobook titles they have, but also all the other programming that is available to you. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Oh, that's a chair we used to do in softball. Uh, what? It's uh, actually Geico. Whenever someone hit a triple, we would wave our bats and yell, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. But we never got to use it because we would only hit home runs. Annoying. The phrase is from Geico because they help save people money? Geico? Yeah, they were our team sponsor. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Me, 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 but also you. The Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film, Pip 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 Powder Donut. <clears throat> okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the name your price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The name your price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Do you love news about LinkedIn, Indeed, Google, and just about every other recruitment tech company out there? Hell yeah. I'm Chad. I'm Cheese. We're the Chad and Cheese Podcast. All the latest recruiting news and insights are on our show. Dripping in snark and attitude. Subscribe today wherever you listen to your podcasts. We, we out. out.